Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a deep dive into all the controls and menus in your Tesla Model 3. Um, this will be based on version 2019. Hey, stay up there. This will be based on version 2019.15.105. Um, I know this is an older version. Um, this is where today is August 3rd. Um, I know some folks are already getting uh, 24.4 and even 28. something. Um, so I think this is because I just took delivery of this vehicle like two weeks ago, and this is this might be on hardware three. So I was told um, by the service advisor that this is the latest uh, software version for hardware three. I don't know if that's true or not, um, but that's basically the version that I'm on right now. So starting from the left hand side, um, this side, you, this is kind of a fixed panel here so you can't really swap this to the other side or anything. Here you'll always have some information about your car. So starting at the top, you, it will just show you your gear selector and then coming down to the middle you'll have um, uh, just when you're in park you can open the trunk, op open the front, open the trunk, uh, open the charge port um, and then when you're driving this will display just lane lines and more information about autopilot. So then down here at the bottom you'll have this button here and you tap it. This is for the camera. It's a little icon that looks like a camera lens. Uh, so that shows you your rear camera. You can use this even while driving. You can just talk it's just a toggle. You tap it to um, show the rear view camera and you tap it to turn it off. The next one here is the little lightning bolt, which is to show you the more just show you more information on your battery. So you at the top you have the charge port. There's another way to open the charge port if you need to. Then your battery percentage, and then you can here adjust the 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 limit that you want to charge the battery to. So that means on a daily basis, Tesla recommends charging to 80 to 90 percent and then when you go on road trips uh, you want full range and then you can charge to 100 percent because charging to 100 percent every day is not good for battery life long term will cause some degradation in the battery so um, I usually have it set to 80 I recently just bumped it up to 90 but you can adjust that here tap done when you're done then down below allows you to uh, see the uh, charge current and in some situations you can adjust that if you need to then there is scheduled charging scheduled charging is for when you have if you have a specific type of plan electricity plan that has good rates off peaks like overnight you can turn that on and then you know you can have your car plugged in but then only it will only start charging at the time that you set it to and then right next to that it'll show you your supercharging cost so when you're using the supercharger and you don't have any free referral miles or anything um, you plug in you can kind of see right there how much that specific uh, charging session is going to cost you so then again we can just tap that toggle just like the camera to display and to hide next we have the little microphone icon this is for uh, voice controls so you can say like things like here let me turn that off so you can just say things like you know navigate home and, and a few other commands like call folks and all that kind of stuff um, so that's for that that is also can be controlled by your steering wheel you can press and hold the little scroll wheel here and that will also bring that up And then right now we don't have a good connection so that's why it's not picking up anything and then right below that you have wipers so you can tap that I have it set to auto you can adjust the speed of your wipers and then it just kind of goes away on its own and then you'll see the little three dots here so this is kind of like similar to what you'll see on certain smartphones where that just means that there are other little pages here so if you swipe to the left this will show you when the car is actually moving this will show you the tire pressure in each of your individual tires right now we're parked so there's no reading and then if you slide back you'll be back 
to the, the main screen and then you slide to the right this will show you your trip meters so it's broken out by since you last charge so this is you know the miles number of miles I drove since the last charging and uh, the time and the watt hour per mile usage and then if you scroll down you can see again some more information trip A trip B I haven't reset any of these you can reset them you can rename them and then you can see the full odometer reading um, down here as well okay so continuing on so we'll just swipe that back so now let's move to uh, some of the items here at the top so here you can control the locks for your car if you want to lo lock all the doors you can just hit that tap it again to unlock and right next to that you have your time if you tap it I guess nothing happens right next to that you have the time temperature and then the little Tesla logo if you tap your Tesla logo you'll get information about your Tesla and then this will automatically kind of just show you the little Easter eggs um, you got our favorite the little fart app that's awesome uh, they actually call it what do they call it emissions testing mode yes that's what it's called um, so let's go back to that screen real quick so here you can see your here you can see your mileage and you can see which version of the software you're on so currently I'm on 2019.15.105 this is the older version I know some folks have already been getting uh, 24.4 and 28.4 uh, but uh, I've heard that uh, some of the newer deliveries so this is uh, today's August 3rd so I just took delivery like two weeks ago so I've heard that some of the newer model 3's um, this is the latest version because they're on hardware 3 so I don't know if that's true or not but we'll see no big deal here you can also uh, tap release notes or sorry owner's manual and you have the full owner's manual right in here so you can scroll through the different topics you want to if you want to learn more about autopilot you can go into auto steer and it'll pull up um, all the information for uh, from your owner's manual so besides having a actual hard physical copy it's easy to access it here as well and then you have your roadside assistance number um, if you do need that you can call um, call that number for roadside assistance okay so then moving on to some of the other items here at the top we have you'll see your name if you've set up your profile so if you tap that um, this this will show you all the different profiles that you have set up so here you can have uh, I think it's up to eight. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but if you tap create more profiles, you can see you can set up um, easy entry for individual users. Easy entry is just a specific setting that will allow you to kind of like when you're getting in and out of the car, it can move the seat back and lift up the steering wheel if that's what you're wanting to do. I don't really uh, feel like I need it, so I, I set it up, but I don't really use it. Uh, but that's where you can set up different profiles for different drivers if you have different people driving so that's super simple and then the next icon here uh, the little black right now without the little red in the middle um, that is for sentry mode and then the little camera with the little red dot is showing that the uh, dash cam is actually recording right now and then right next to that is the LTE signal and then Bluetooth so if you want to connect your car to Wi-Fi um, I don't have a Wi-Fi signal because I'm in a parking garage um, but if you are at home or somewhere where you have a Wi-Fi connection you can just tap that and then you can go into Wi-Fi settings you can set up a Wi-Fi network give it a password so you can connect to Wi-Fi and that's supposed to also help get updates and stuff faster um, but if you have the long range model um, which comes with LTE for the first year included um, you should be getting updates over LTE as well okay so that covers everything at the top starting with the bottom right 
um, you have your volume so you can either tap to turn down the volume or tap to turn it up but you can there's a faster way to do this too you can just tap and hold and just slide your finger and that alt wait yeah you can just slide your finger uh, it doesn't it doesn't let you go all the way up because you run out of screen but you can certainly turn it down um, so slide your finger that's probably a little bit easier to do then you can uh, control your defrost rear back window windshield front windshield uh, seat heaters for the passenger and then the temperature temperature is the same way if you have it set to auto um, you can tap and slide as you need to we'll keep it at 70 71 that way it's not making too much noise and then if you tap the fan you get the full display of the air vents and where exactly they're blowing the air so when you tap that you can tap and slide you can see here this is how you can kind of control the direction of the airflow so I kind of have it facing myself um, and then on the driver's side you can also even pinch to zoom out and pinch to zoom in to kind of control where you want to go again same thing up and down so that's really cool the way they kind of design that and I usually have it set to auto which works um, really well in just controlling the temperature and it will kind of control the speed of the fan so we can tap that again and then it hides it this is for the driver seat heaters um, and then if you tap that little overflow menu icon there you get some additional items so starting with the first one here we have our calendar so you can sync your calendar um, with your um, it works with my iPhone I'm sure it works with Android phones as well you can tap that oh, where did it go so here just gives you some more information if it's not updating um, what you need to do so you can do that if you need to um, I have it set to show calendar entry, uh, show calendar upon entry. So er, any day where there is something on my calendar, when I get on, get in the car that morning, it will have that item listed. So it's a good little reminder. You can set it to morning and evening, or just show it always. However you need to, you can control that. Then we'll go ahead and close that. Click the little X to close that. And you so the next item in this little menu here is energy consumption so you'll see there's like two tabs here so this comes consumption and trip so consumption will show you your projected range based on how you've been driving and you can adjust that by the last five minutes of driving you can see the peaks are like heavy acceleration and then here it's like kind of going downhill or regen and then that's how it's coming up with that range based on your last five minutes I would get 149 miles if I change it to you can change it to 15 minutes oh I'm sorry I think that's miles it's last 30 miles 15 miles and 5 miles and then these are just average range you can change it to instant as well and then if you have an actual trip uh, you have the navigation set up and you're going on a trip um, this will actually have information here and this is super handy it just shows you like a little graph of where your charge is right now and where it's going to be um, by the time you get there and you can check kind of midway through your trip to see like are you kind of driving according to how the range is how it's how the car is calculating the range for you so if you're you know too high or too low above that projected path you can kind of adjust your driving style based on that and then the car will kind of you know give you some tips along the way too if you're driving too aggressively and it thinks you're not going to make it to the, your next supercharging point it will it will tell you to kind of like hey chill out a little bit okay so the next item we have here is the web so this is the browser so it does have a browser that's now was recently updated to use uh, the chromium engine which is the google chrome engine so it does work a lot better at least from what I've heard 
um, before um, it was pretty laggy and unusable but now as you can see it's pretty responsive even though I don't have the strongest signal um, it loads up you know full desktop style pages just fine video is disabled for safety reasons but in a future update in V10 um, Elon said which is supposed to be coming in August mid-August or mid to late August really uh, we were supposed to get uh, Netflix and is it YouTube I think it's YouTube Netflix and YouTube while you're parked you should be able to play some video so that's coming pretty soon that's the cool thing about this you can get updates um, I don't know why I don't know why the back button maybe it's this website or if it's just the browser uh, kind of being crappy that it does not give me the back button let's go to a different I don't I don't even have any favorite setup but that's the browser and again you can it just kind of it's the same kind of redundant uh, buttons here you can uh, select the rear view camera from here charging which is what we all have already talked about and making a phone call here um, if you've synced up your contacts um, which I haven't um, you can do that from there all right so the next item down here we have is the little music icon so you tap that so this is for all your media in the media controls it pops up just slightly you can always um, tap and slide up to see it and then you can if you want to see more you can slide up even more and so then you get access to basically more icons more buttons down here radio is you know radio pretty self-explanatory um, streaming is through slacker so you'll see um, all the stuff pop up here from slacker let me turn off why is it going to radio let's just play something here and pause it and then if you have your phone connected through Bluetooth like I do you'll see those devices pop up here if you have more than one and tune in is for things like podcasts and I think they have some music stuff too but I mainly just use it for podcasts and then if you want to control your media settings you can tap the little settings icon there you have tone you have your balance of you know how where you want the sound to be focused towards the driver rear I just like to have it centered and then you have options here for immersive sound high standard or off I don't even honestly notice that much of a difference with immersive sound I just I have it on high which is fine for now I guess I'll I'll change it uh, I've, I've changed it up a few different times I think on the immersive sound it just sounds a little bit more like a little more of a surround sound a little more clearer so I kind of like it um, you can allow for explicit content and allow mobile control things like that there in the audio settings and then here the last icon last button there is just to search here you can search for your podcasts, music albums, um, when you, you know whether you want to play them through Slacker or TuneIn, doesn't matter. You just search for them and you can add them to your favorites or start playing music that you want to play. All right, so now moving on to, now this is another um, item here, the little car icon right there. If you tap that, it will always default to quick controls. So quick controls are exactly just that. These are kind of the most commonly used items um, that, that you're going to need. So you have your exterior lights. Uh, most of the time you can just set them to auto and forget about them. Fog lights if you want to turn them on or off. Uh, mirrors if you want to adjust your mirrors. You just tap that. Then it gives you another option. So we have left selected. And then it's telling you that you should use the left scroll wheel on the steering to control those so that's like right here so you can see the mirror kind of hard to tell right now but I'm moving the mirror around but that's how that works you can set a mirror auto tilt so that is when every time you put the car in reverse it will um, tilt the mirrors down so you can kind of see the curb so if you're doing a lot of parallel parking near curbs and stuff you can use that feature and then there is mirror auto fold 
which is when you when the car locks it'll fold the mirrors in so you can make those adjustments here and then when you go back and you close out of there there's the steering wheel controls so this is to adjust the steering column so again you'll use the left this is to go up to go down and then if you click this to light right or left it goes in or out and then if we don't like these settings we can just tap and go back to my profile and it'll put it right back to where everything was and then if you want to manually fold the mirrors you can just tap that so it'll fold in the mirrors and then one other cool thing is if you anytime you fold when you press fold uh, to fold in the mirrors it'll show another link here that says always fold mirrors at this location so if you tap that then it will remember to auto fold at this location so let's say you have a really tight garage or something that every time you get in you have to fold in your mirrors so you can set that and it will auto fold um, every time you get to your driveway so you can easily park in your garage so next we have a window lock so window lock is, is just that um, if you don't want your passengers um, even you know any of your passengers rolling up and down the windows you can hit that that'll lock your windows and so only the driver side will be able to uh, control the windows so that's pretty common in, in other cars too but that's where that's located and then the next item we have the last item under quick controls is the display brightness so I found that you just having it set to auto works just fine but if there's a situation where you need to adjust it um, you can we'll just crank it up just a little bit here uh, that might be a little too bright that's good right there 15% um, you can adjust brightness there as well and then under quick controls or just in this main driving menu um, you'll see a button for your glove box you can press that and it opens the glove box so there is no button um, out here or latch or anything to open the glove box you will have to access it um, from here um, now moving on to the next item we have lights so again some of these things are redundant um, you already saw this in quick controls but here you can dive a little bit deeper into lights control you know you can have a parking auto whatever then you have your interior lights again I have them set to auto works just fine the ambient lights let's see if I can show you those um, this just the lights that are well I can't really show right now it's kinda dark but ambient lights are let's see if I open the door here so there's some lights they're not super bright but you'll see like in the passenger floor panel there um, there's some lighting there a little bit of lighting here by the center console and then a little bit of lighting um, and it has to be like full fully dark for you to even notice them there's some lighting in here in this little left pocket in the doors so that's what that's for um, so you can certainly leave that on and then going down further we have auto high beam auto high beam is it will basically if you turn that on it will um, detect where if you're driving in too dark of conditions it'll turn on um, high beams for you automatically but if it sees any oncoming cars it will turn those off so you're not like blinding everybody and pissing people off on the road um, I just have it set to off because I am not doing any sort of extreme um, nighttime driving so I don't really uh, haven't seen haven't felt the need for them just yet um, headlights after exit um, that's just your option uh, when the car locks if you're you know, leaving like dark parking lots that kind of thing um, it will keep the headlights on for like I don't know like I haven't exactly counted but it's like any anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds after the car locks so just so you have a little bit of light um, let you kind of you know walk away and then steering wheel lights you know I don't I don't actually I'm not sure what those are to be perfectly honest you can turn on the steering wheel lights um, from there as well but I'm not 100% sure what those are to be to be perfectly honest okay moving on to the next item we have locks 
so locks here it shows you your keys first item here which is my phone is my primary key um, I haven't named the um, the two key cards you get two key cards and you set up your phone um, the app on your phone which works as a key you can name the key cards here by going into edit whatever you want to name them so if you have two people using two different key cards you know it'll be easy to kind of organize that information again we have um, window lock here again and then child lock if you don't want your rear passengers opening their doors trying to jump out of the car you can uh, control the child locks from there unlock on park is exactly that so if we lock the car right now oh, let me first hold on so if I put it in drive and let's say my car is locked and then I put it in park it unlocks the locks so it's just that you know when you pull up and stop um, you put the car in park it will unlock all the doors uh, lock confirmation sound um, that is when um, this is one of the features that that I really like that co combined with the walk away door lock so when you unlock the car or if you walk away from the car it automatically locks it'll just um, beep and let you know that it actually locked itself so you have the option of turning those on or off next item we have the display display mode here is okay so this is I have it set to auto but what we're in right now is essentially the the the, the day mode which is using you know wider background so it's easier to kind of see in bright lights and during daytime you can set it to night mode let me change it and this is what that looks like so it's essentially like a dark mode like on your smartphones um, this I don't think I've tried to kind of use this um, during daytime I don't, I don't think I kind of I like it it's a little bit harder to see in bright sunlight uh, so I have it set to auto so when you have it set to auto what it'll do is it'll automatically based on your location uh, sunrise and sunset times it will at sunrise set it to nighttime mode and then sunrise it'll set it to um, day mode so I think auto works best for me but you can uh, set it up however you feel like it and then again we have brightness um, like we had under quick controls you can control the brightness I uh, found auto that works perfectly fine screen clean mode is pretty handy um, you know like if you've used any kind of tablets um, this is a 15 inch screen and there you're touching everywhere you know you're gonna get some greasy fingerprints on the display so when you when it's time to clean it you just hit that and this is what the display will look like it will basically you know you can now there's nothing you can do to like mess any mess up any of your settings so you can go to town into wiping the screen and you know you've already probably found that it comes with a little wipe so we'll do that right now wipe off the fingerprints you clean it and then you can just press and hold for about three seconds and then it'll exit back out um, right back to the menu so that's how you can easily clean your screen without pushing all the buttons or turning off the car next we have language you can choose your language for the menu items there's tons of different languages here you can also use navigation languages there's a few different options it's English Spanish Spanish and French uh, and then you have your time formats you can change it to 12 hour or 24 hour you have your energy display this is if you have it set to energy it will show a battery percentage here if you change it to distance it will show the range um, that basically the rated range uh, based on that battery percentage uh, I'm just kind of trying out different uh, modes right now since I've only had the car for two weeks uh, so far I've been okay with having it on uh, energy percentage but sometimes I will take a peek at if I want to see range I'll just do that and then I can kind of see the projected range based on how I've been driving it 
let's go back into the display okay so that was energy next is distance you can change it to kilometers or miles um, that's pretty self-explanatory um, you can change the temperature degrees to uh, Fahrenheit to or Celsius and then PSI or bar for tire pressure so that's it for the display section let's go on to the driving section in the driving section you'll see an acceleration mode so this is um, standard mode is just you know all the power whatever whichever model you have is just standard to standard chill mode um, I've tried it it just basically puts it in chill mode it's you know it really uh, backs down the power kind of detunes things a little bit kind of if you want to like let your friend drive or something and you don't want them to go hog wild you can set it to chill mode uh, so it won't you know it just won't be as fast um, but it's definitely noticeable I didn't enjoy driving it in chill mode if I want to not drive fast I can just not drive fast in standard mode um, next we have water break I'm gonna take a sip of water let's all take a sip of water let's let's take a break to subscribe to the channel how about a subscription break I'm copying uh, wh what are they called the straight pipes I'm copying straight pipes time for a subscription break guys Ah, uh, okay. So moving along, steering mode. Uh, steering mode. We have comfort, standard, and sport. So that just simply means how light or heavy you want the steering feel to be. Um, I in city, I just kind of keep it in comfort mode. If you want, to, you know, if you're doing some spirited driving around some, you know, curvy roads and corners, and you want a little bit of a heavier steering feel, you can set it to sport or standard, however you like it. Uh, but for city driving, comfort is just fine. It's electric steering anyway, so there isn't, there isn't much feedback. It's not like the old school hydraulic steerings. I'm not going to get started on that. Um, regenerative braking. Regenerative braking, I like to have it on standard so I can get maximum re regen to charge, charge up my batteries. Plus, I like doing one pedal driving. Uh, if you keep it to low, it'll just basically like when you take your foot off the throttle, uh, or the accelerator pedal, um, it it will car will slow down a little bit less. But if you have it on standard, it will it will slow down more. Um, then we have creep mode. Creep mode is well. Let's see what it says actually here. Slowly move when brake pedal is released. So creep mode is essentially it it kind of mimics the feeling of if you turn it on, it will mimic the feeling of a standard um, uh, a ICE car's like automatic transmission. So ICE is uh, ICE stands for internal combustion engine. So these are like your normal gas cars. So when you take your yeah, so when you take your foot off the brake, it'll kind of just like roll forward a little bit, like a normal car does with an automatic transmission. I like to leave it off because I always enjoy driving manual cars anyway. So I'm just you know, I like having like just when I'm not accelerating, uh, the car shouldn't move. So I don't like it where it just you know automatic cars would roll forward. Um, so you can turn that on or off however you feel like it slip start is is basically to help free vehicles stuck in snow sand or mud so it's all it's doing is backing off the stability control a little bit or traction control a little bit to allowing allowing the tires to spin a little bit to get you going so some folks also will use that if you're trying to get the best like 0 to 60 time or something or you're on the drag strip uh, trying to run some quarter miles and stuff and you want the maximum acceleration uh, I think some folks have said um, Turning that on allowing a little bit of slip off the launch will give you a little bit of a better time I haven't tested that myself, but that's also there if you want to turn that on or off next we have autopilot autopilot is the first item in autopilot is uh, the cruise follow distance so that is the the amount of distance you want to keep from uh, the car in front of you so you can adjust it here and it kind of shows you that little icon when you change it you can see it getting closer to the car and you can also control this with the right uh, scroll wheel if you press right or left it will do the same thing auto steer is uh, works with autopilot keep your car centered in the lane and take note of the fact that it says beta so it is something that's in beta so that means you know pay attention when you have autopilot on 
and the car is doing auto steer. Next we have navigate on autopilot that also says beta. Navigate on autopilot is the feature that if you got if you got the full self-driving package with your Model 3 which is an optional package um, you can turn on navigate on autopilot and um, so basically when you have it turned on here anytime you set up a destination and you're getting on the freeway and you turn on autopilot you engage autopilot it will um, basically take over change lanes as it needs to to get around slower traffic and change lanes to get to the off-ramp and then kind of notify you to take over so it's kind of full self-driving on the highway essentially so customizing navigate on autopilot so we have even more options here you can enable at start of every trip um, that just basically means right now if I have it set to yes any destination I, I set and it will involves driving on the highway um, it will have it will automatically be on uh, navigate on autopilot will be on all I'll have to do is push down on this stock twice to um, start it and it will it will basically take over and change lanes and do all that stuff next we have speed based lane changes so this essentially means like how aggressive do you want it to be to try to get around slower traffic uh, change lanes that kind of thing right now I was just kind of testing out average I haven't really tested Mad Max require lane change confirmation um, that is again when you're in navigate on autopilot if you want it to when it's good before you get ready to make a lane change it will ask you to confirm or not I have it set to no it's just fine lane change and notification you can again before it changes lanes it can notify you via chime vibrate or both I have it set to off next we have summon summon is another beta feature um, right now all it does is you can use the app to pull the car pull, like have the car move forward or backwards um, so like if you're like stuck in a really tight space uh, you can have the car kind of and you can't get to get into the door like get into your car um, you can just use the app to have the car kind of pull out of a tight spot you can further customize uh, summon so here you can change like bumper clearance summon distance uh, side clearance require continuous press those kinds of things these are just safety features so you want to make sure you really tweak it however you how however you prefer speed limit warning um, that's just again it will display the speed limit when you're navigating and then speed limit um, relative or absolute you can change it here to offset on how much you want it to automatically every time you engage autopilot like how many um, do you want it to just go the speed limit or do you want it to automatically like go over uh, go over or under certain number of miles per hour forward collision warning um, you can control its sensitivity so if you feel like it's being too aggressive and warning you for any collisions um, you can set it to late I just kind of have it set to medium right now I found that to be kind of okay for me uh, lane departure avoidance you can turn you know you can set that to give you a warning or you can have it assist to kind of try to keep you in the lane I just have it set to a warning and that's fine emergency lane departure avoidance so that is um, again like if you're if you're going out of your lane if you wanted to kind of vibrate the steering wheel a little to tell you and you're not using your turn signal um, you want the car to kind of give you a little bit of a warning that hey what's you know you need to drive straight and stay centered blind spot collision warning chime um, that is if you're changing lanes and there's someone in your blind spot um, it will give you a little warning for that automatic emergency braking that is again if you have if you're about to rear end someone or bump into the wall or something like that that will um, try to slow you down or stop you entirely depending on your speed next we have the obstacle aware acceleration you know this one is basically if it detects something is in front of you like you're stopped like let's say you're making like a right turn and you have a car in front of you and you, you thought that the car started moving and you looked away for the oncoming traffic and you tried to accelerate but the car really didn't move this can kind of detect that and uh, and kind of stop you from rear-ending someone so that's a cool feature 
go moving on to the next menu item here this is navigation so the first thing you'll see in navigation is control the volume you can turn off voice uh, turn by turn voice navigation or you can turn up the volume however you need to trip planner so trip planner I think you should have this on this is super helpful this will anytime you enter a destination it adds stops at superchargers if charging is needed to reach your destination so this basically <clears throat> will guide you to make sure that you're not going to run out of battery um, on your long trips so it will make sure that you're stopping and then when it's routing you through the different superchargers it will tell you how long you have to charge at each one to continue on to your trip next we have online routing it generates the optimal route and takes real-time traffic conditions into account when navigating so if you got the long range um, long range or performance models which come with LTE you'll get um, traffic data so that will allow you uh, to use that traffic data to kind of calculate um, times uh, your, your, your navigation times and then it'll reroute based on if it saves more than 10 minutes you can set this to however you like if it finds another route based on the traffic conditions it will recommend that and then you can um, you can take that different route to save yourself some time the next three items are just your pretty standard navigation type stuff um, if you want to avoid ferries and avoid tolls or use HOV lanes or not use HOV lanes you can kind of control those alright that's it for navigation next we have the safety and security section in this section the first item is your parking brake uh, I've never really used the parking brake but I believe you you have to have your foot on the brake pedal and then you just hold the um, you just hold the parking button down and then it'll uh, put in the parking brake or engage the parking brake power off so power off is literally just powering down your car completely and you just press the brake pedal and it will turn back on speed limit uh, mode um, this is just again just to set the speed limit if you don't want to go over a certain speed limit you can do that sentry mode sentry mode is a good one this is your car's basically security alarm system um, you can have it turned on and this will uh, car is put into park it will start to monitor uh, from the various cameras around the car to see if anybody's messing with your car and they'll start recording based on that you you can set it up to exclude certain locations where you don't want it to be turned on because you know it does kind of eat up some battery because it, it's using the cameras to monitor I, I would recommend like probably excluding it at, at a place like your house or something unless you know you're gonna get jacked in your house then leave it on but um, I, I have it set to exclude home you can have it set to exclude work or other favorite places next we have um, park assist chimes that is just the sensors around the car if you're getting too close to the curbs or other cars when you're parking they'll kind of chime you can have those on or off uh, security alarm again pin to drive pin to drive um, it, I haven't turned it on but it's basically when you get in the car um, before you can put it in drive and drive off it will ask you for a pin so if you're worried about someone just kind of like stealing your phone off of you and running away with your car for some reason um, you can turn that on and set a pin cabin overheat protection this is um, by default what it will do is um, whenever the interior of the car reaches a hundred and five degrees it can turn on the fan or the AC itself as well to kind of keep the temperature below um, um, below or at 105 degrees Fahrenheit so I have it set to on but no AC just to save on battery um, but if you you know if you know you're gonna be coming back to your car and your car is parked in the hot sun or something you can set it to on that way you you know when you come back it won't be so hot in your car but again just keep 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 that in mind that of course if you have it set to AC and your car is sitting out in the hot sun all day long um, it will use up a little more battery if it's trying to run the AC to keep the interior cool and then the next one is allow mobile access this is you know if you want to use the app you're gonna have to turn that on um, this you can you know you turn that off it'll block the 
um, any apps from accessing the car's data so that's definitely handy to keep on but if you need to turn it off you can data sharing you can read this whole thing about if you want to share data um, with Tesla to improve whoa sorry about that let's go back data sharing so so you can read this whole thing about how if you want to um, allow Tesla to collect some data um, just so they can improve you know like um, autopilot and all that kind of stuff next item we have is service so in the service section we have um, wiper service mode all that does is if you turn that on it will bring the wipers up we'll do that so it brings the wipers up so you can easily get to them and replace the wipers if you need to otherwise they're they're kind of tucked away under so it's otherwise it'll be kind of hard to get to them next we have adjust headlights um, this you really don't have to do this unless there's some really specific situation you're running into where you notice the headlights are not leveled um, this is where you can control and level uh, your headlights but it does kind of warn you that you should probably have a trained service technician do this so you don't start aiming them too high and start blinding people on the road next we have towing just kind of gives you some tips around towing that your car should be towed on a flatbed trailer and by not by one of those where it's just you know dragging you on just your rear wheels and then you can reset the TPMS sensors here you can do a full factory reset so uh, I'm assuming this is when you're getting ready to sell your car you want to remove all your profiles personal information you can do a factory reset owner's manual is also available from here and then the very last item in this menu is software so software will show you again your your VIN information and your total mileage on the car and then it will show you the version of software like I mentioned before I am running V9 2019.15.105 you can view the release notes to see what's what was new in this update it will give you full detail of all the stuff that was new in that particular update and then we also have an option called software update preference you can choose from either standard or advanced which just simply means if you are you know if you're wanting to get software updates as soon as they become available even though they may be there might be a few bugs here and there um, but you want to get them early you can set it to advanced that's what I have it set to but if you want to just kind of wait it out a little and get the updates as they're a little bit more stable you can have it set to standard alright guys so that's it that was the very last item under driving and that's it that's all your full controls um, that was a full deep dive into how you can control everything in your Tesla Model 3 um, please feel free to leave me any questions in the description section and what I'll also do is I'll leave t uh, timestamps in the comments I'll pin that comment so it'll be clickable um, for each of the timestamps for for all the menu items that we went through so you can easily skip around because I know this video is pretty long thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video and you want to want want to watch more stuff like this you can subscribe um, and if you really enjoyed this you made it this long uh, I and if you found this informational uh, please give it a thumbs up I really appreciate it again thanks for watching have a good one bye bye